Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Daniela and today I have a tutorial for this bead crochet coin purse. Uh, I've already posted this tutorial here in parts because it's very long, uh, but if you like everything in one video, you will find it right here. Uh, to help you get your way in such a long video, I will summarize what we are going to do at the beginning. First, I will tell you what we will need to make a bead crochet coin purse. Then I will talk about the pattern, how to read it, uh, how to work with it and how to thread the beads according to it. This purse uh, consists of two parts, so I will show you how to crochet them. Uh, then we will sew them together, sew the lining and finally sew the frame. There's going to be a lot going on, uh, so the video is divided into chapters, so you can easily skip around. Or check out the individual parts of the video, you might want to save just the part of the tutorial that interests you uh, to come back to later. So here we go! If you have prepared a bead mat, bead board or something like this, a few sticky notes uh, to write the letters that indicate the colors of the beads. I have made a pattern for size 11 beads, uh, so here I have Toho round seed beads size 11. Uh, you can see the names of the colors here on the screen and as always I will put all the things you will need in the video description as well, including these codes and color names. Uh, these recommended beads can also be found directly in the pattern, including the quantity we will need. A thread. It is important to choose a fairly strong and thin thread. I have a jean thread here, it's approximately 0.5 mm in diameter. If you want to buy this thread directly, I offer it on my Etsy shop in several colors. I use it to sew almost all of my products and judging by the reviews, you've been complimenting it a lot too. Uh, one spool will be enough for a whole purse. We will also need a thread in a different color. It will only serve as a marker, so you only need a small piece, maybe just two or three centimeters. It can be slightly thicker than the thread you'll be crocheting with, but it doesn't matter. Uh, then we will need a big eye needle so that the beads are easy to thread. A hook. I use a very small hook uh, that is 0.5 millimeters. If that's too small for you, then of course use any other size you're comfortable with. But it shouldn't be too big so that you get nice loops. We will need a metal frame. This one is uh, 8.5 centimeters wide. If you don't know where to buy one, I've seen a lot of them on AliExpress. I will put a link in the video description. I used a piece of fabric on the inside. This specific one is synthetic satin, but of course you can use any fabric you want. Um, it's not necessary. Some people don't do the inside at all, but then uh, you may have visible joints if you add a new thread during crochet. Uh, so it's up to you. I want it to look great since I'm spending so much time on it. Uh, I have also seen someone crochet the same two circles as these, just without the beads. That's a great option too, so you have this, uh, the inside crocheted too, but without the visible joints. But of course it's more time consuming. To show you how to cut out the lining, I have prepared this template. You can download it uh, in PDF. You can find the link in the description of the video down below. Just make sure when you print it uh, that you have the scale set to 100% so that you print the actual size of the template. Uh, the wallet consists of seven triangles, so the shape of the lining corresponds to that. Uh, the width of the finished crocheted wallet is approximately uh, 9.5 centimeters, so I added uh, 0.5 centimeters to each side of the lining for sewing. So the template is 10.5 centimeters wide in total, in the widest place. The size of your wallet may vary slightly based on your crochet style, so I recommend measuring the finished side of the wallet and if you find it to be significantly different from my 9.5 centimeters width, I recommend adjusting the lining template accordingly. Simply subtract or add a few millimeters around the circumference of the template. So with it comes the fact that we will need a needle and a thread to sew it together. If you want, you can also sew, use a sewing machine or 
I bought a tiny little hand sewing machine. I wasn't expecting anything from it, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's perfectly sufficient for these purposes and only cost me uh, 140 crowns, uh, which is about $6. For the price, it's a really cool thing. Next, we need some pencil for tracing. And since I'll be using satin, which is synthetic and easy to melt, a lighter to keep the fabric from fraying. Uh, the frame needs to be sewn to the beadwork and I don't want the stitching to be visible so I will use this clear nylon thread, it's 0.2 millimeters. I use centipede braided lace to cover the stitches uh, on the inside to sew the beadwork to the frame. Uh, they are very easy to find in different colors and width, for example on Amazon or AliExpress. I have seen in some patterns that they don't cover the stitches at all, or they cover it by sewing a few beads on the inside, or they sew a classic ribbon. Uh, there are many possibilities. I like this lace. I bought it in several colors and width. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to use this uh, old pink one, which is eight millimeters wide. I don't want to deal with any more sewing of this lace, so I will glue it in. The result looks better to me and I will use this Uhu glue to glue it on. Uh, you can use any strong all-purpose glue and I will apply the glue with a toothpick. And of course we will need scissors and that's it. I designed this pink pattern for you. You can download it for free. You can find the link in the video description down below. Uh, you often ask me where I draw patterns like this. There is no specialized software for these different shapes or at least I don't know about it, so I have to improvise a bit. Uh, I mostly draw online at crochetbeadpaint.info or I use jbeat software. You can find the links down below. If you look at the pattern, you can always find the pattern information up here. Uh, what beads to use, how many basic rows the triangle has, information about recommended hook and thread, and there's a link to my tutorials the information itself about stringing the beads and the markers I used in the pattern. We will get to that in more detail. And down here there is information about the amount of each color of beads, what leather they are marked with uh, in the pattern, information about amount in grams, and color recommendations, including the bead codes. If you are looking for a specific bead color, it's easy to search by this code. On the next page, you can see a graphic presentation of the pattern. Uh, for us, this second part is probably the most telling at the moment, uh, where you can see what it actually looks like without the gray background and the stripe, of course. And here I always show what a one separate triangle looks like uh, with and without each color marking. On the following pages is the stringing order. We will string the beads on thread accordingly. And I have added uh, some markers. I will talk about it in a minute. Sometimes I get a question from you, where do I get these patterns? Did you try to create your own pattern in the programs I recommend, but your pattern looks completely different? How is it possible that there is so much information there? I have marks and so on. Well, I do it all on my own. The output from the software itself looks like this. Uh, you can see that there's just a graphic visual on one line then some information that doesn't make sense for this type of pattern at all. That information would be valid if we were drawing a pattern for a bead crochet rope, but since we have a completely different shape, it doesn't apply. And then we have a list of the beads. That's correct, except there's no markings for the individual markers. So when you compare the two patterns, you can see that I'm adding a lot of information. So even if you buy a pattern from me on Etsy, you won't get the automatic output, but you will always get a PDF edited by me with a lot of extra information. Not every seller does it. And now for the pattern itself. Uh, well, a beginner who can only read patterns for bead crochet ropes would probably have a bit of a problem with this type of pattern. I have some background here because I can't do it other way, some incomplete rows of beads up here, two types of markers on the side here to make it easier, but 
once I explain what it's all about, you will easily understand. The foundation of the pattern is such a triangle. Each side has 20 beads. And we basically put seven of these triangles together and crochet. If you have searched for patterns like this on Pinterest, you will have come across uh, that they don't have complex patterns like the one I've showed you a while ago, uh, but you will find just this one triangle. And that's quite enough. You can also make it based on that one triangle if you already know how to do it. I like to draw the whole thing this way because then I add the markers, which makes my job much easier. My point is basically that this way the program generates the whole list of the beads and I don't have to do anything when stringing. You are less likely to make a mistake that way. If you are asking if it always have to be seven triangles, no, it doesn't. It can also often be six or eight, but then the coin purse looks a little different. So I will cover that again next time. Same with the 20 beads triangle side length. It can be bigger or smaller, but then again, the pattern would have to be adjusted for the size of the frame. Uh, so I will show you that again in another video. It's not just about adding beads. There are some other tricks to make it look good. I wouldn't say there's a one size fit all formula for this, but each pattern needs to be adapted. Often you need to try it out directly to find the best solution. Uh, okay, so if we only had this one triangle as a pattern, we would string the beads from right to left and from top to bottom, like this. And since we have seven triangles, we will string each row seven times. So I'm gonna string all these first rows of seven triangles, then all the second rows, and I'm gonna go all the way to the middle. Uh, but it's useful enough for me to know where one row ends and the other begins. So I know which loops I'll be increasing the triangle in as I crochet. That's why I added this pink marker at the end of each row. So when I hit the pink marker in this bead list, I know that I'm moving on to the next row and how many beads I have to crochet before I crochet the two beads into one loop. Uh, that's where I'm going to increase the triangle. The rule itself is simple. When you crochet, you crochet two beads into one loop at the end of each triangle. But you can easily get lost in the pattern, miscount the beads or string them wrong and then you can get completely lost. The markers will help you to find your way uh, around the pattern better. As you can see, I still have black markers here. Uh, they separate these four extra rows. Well, we have to attach the frame somehow, so in addition to these seven triangles, I have crocheted uh, this part without beads. These are four rows that I'm going to hide in the frame. And these four rows of beads that make up the thickness of the coin purse itself. As you can see, uh, the rows with beads partly overlap into these triangles. What's another change is uh, that when I crochet these last four rows without beads, I normally increase in the corners. But when I crochet these last four rows with beads, I don't I increase in the corners. And at the end of each triangle, I only have 20 beads in last four rows each time. Plus uh, there are three extra beads on each row on either side. That way the edge curves in. And I have all this already reflected in my pattern. So you don't have to think about it and just thread on all the beads you have in the bead list here. Of course, you skip all the gray beads because they're just the background of the pattern. Start adding the beads from the edge and crochet from middle outwards. So if you look at the bead list, you string 83 pink beads, uh, then three more pink beads and then a black marker. And again, 83 and three 
and black marker. Uh, there are 86 beads on each row. 20, 40, 60, 80, plus here 3 beads on each side here. And so we continue until the end of the list. Always string from uh, top to bottom, left to right, and page by page. When we get to the very end, we'll have strung beads for this whole one half of the coin purse. When you come across this pink marker, instead of a bead, you string a paper marker on which you write a red number, uh, in this case 18 plus 2. This means that when you come across this marker, you will crochet 18 beads, one bead in each loop, and then two beads in the same loop. And you always repeat this seven times because there are seven triangles in the pattern. Once you have done that, you always hit another piece of paper. That way you can keep checking that you are crocheting correctly. Uh, there aren't that many beads in one half, so I string and crochet this one part at a time. All this corresponds to this part. If I had a longer pattern, like 40 beads, this is 20, if I had 40, I would split the stringing into parts. The way to do this is to divide the pattern in any given place. Uh, I will divide it, for example, this two pages will be one part and the page three and four will be the second part. So I divided it roughly in half. So we string that part first. Again, the same rule apply top to bottom, left to right, page by page. Then work that part, crochet it, then thread this part the first part, page one and two, and thread it again according to the same rules and crochet. So from top to bottom, left to right, and page by page. We can simply add a new thread as many times as we want. If you want to watch a short tutorial on how to do it, the link is up here. It's also useful in case you break the thread, uh, string the beads wrong, etc. To better understand that, mm, if you look at our basic triangle, we string, for example, this part, crochet it, and then we string this part and crochet it again. It's very simple. Okay, uh, I strung all my beads. If I lay it out with the text, it looks like this. Uh, here you see the four extra edge rows, and here are the triangles themselves, as the number of beads gradually decreases. Uh, so now we come to the actual crocheting. We will start with a magic circle and then we crochet in a spiral. Crocheting in a spiral is easier than crocheting with a turning chain. Uh, in some videos I call it a lifting stitch. When you look at a given pattern, there are some rules to help you decide whether to crochet in a spiral 
or a user turning chain. I won't go into details here, I will explain it in more detail in a separate video. But in general, if you uh, don't have a pattern in the edge rows, but just a sort of monochromatic background, you can crochet in a spiral. They are just pink beads. The pattern itself uh, is not all the way to the edge. If you have a pattern that uh, continues over the triangles, you should use a turning chain, otherwise you will end up with a pattern that jumps like that in the first and last triangle. But if you use a turning chain, it will look like this. I will show you how to do the turning chain in a future video. Uh, but if you are impatient, I use the turning chain to make this Christmas ball, for example, so I explain it that there too. Uh, so I draw this pattern for a spiral crochet, no turning chain needed here. But if you want to use a turning chain, that is of course also possible. Now we can start with the magic circle. This is my end tail, this is my working tail. I take my end tail, I wrap it diagonally around my index finger, I cross the yarn, I grab my working tail between the middle and ring finger, I put the hook under the right thread, I pull the other thread and turn uh, the hook at the same time to make a loop. Yarn over and pull through. This part with two threads is on the left side. And I will start crocheting directly with beads. So I prepare first beads. As you can see we have seven beads in the first row each bead for one triangle. Uh, so I put the hook to this big loop, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. It's a classic single crochet with beads. Uh, we will use a single crochet for the whole purse uh, because it would not work with a slip stitch. And to the big loop again, slide a bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And continue the same way with all seven beads. As you can see, I crochet my loops pretty loose. Uh, it's good to crochet the first row pretty loosely because that way you can see where to put the hook. Don't worry at all, it will look nice. To make the loop not so big, slowly pull this end to tighten the loop. We don't have to tighten it too much for now, we can tighten the loop later. As for the crochet itself, try to not uh, to tighten the loops too much. Crochet loops rather loose because we want to work to lie flat, not to twist. So I prepare another beads. On the second row we will crochet two beads in one loop, zero plus two. Zero means no beads in a separate loop, plus two beads in one loop. So I remove it and slide these beads down. So put the hook to the first loop, right into the loop under two threads, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. Then put the hook to the same loop again, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And continue the same way till the end of the row. So I put the hook to the next loop, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through both loops and again to the same loop, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over 
and pull through both loops. Again the same to the next loop. And to the same loop again. Uh, here we apply the rule that we always increase the triangles at the end of each triangle. But since uh, the second row of each triangle consists of only two beads, we are basically right at the end of the row. We apply this rule in all 20 rows and um, you will see it better in the following rows. Whenever you don't know what to do or forget what to do, you can check the markers. I will give you one more tip to make things easier, which I've been applying since the end of the second row. Uh, when I crochet the last bit of the row, I normally put the hook uh, to the loop, slide a bit down, yarn over, pull through one loop and stop. Now you can see that I have two uh, loops on my hook. Take a piece of yarn that is a significantly different color to the one I'm crocheting with. Uh, I'm gonna put the yarn in front of this loop. Yarn over and pull through both loops. That's how I marked where the row ended. It's very useful for checking uh, that you are crocheting correctly. You can easily pull the yarn out so I always move it uh, to the end of the current row. So now when I crochet the next row I will end uh, at this exact marker I will show you. Prepare the beads for the third row. Uh, there are three beads in each triangle. We have one plus two on the paper so we will work the first bead in one loop and then two beads in one loop and again one bead in one loop and then two beads in one loop. Slide the beads down. So I uh, put the hook to the next loop, slide a bead down, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through both and to the next loop and in the next loop there will be two beads in this loop. So slide a bead down, yarn over, pull through and again to the same loop and crochet another bead here and we will continue exactly the same way so to the next loop one bead to the next loop and two beads to this loop one and two and again one bead here and two beads to the next loop to the same loop one bead and two beads into the next loop and again one bead to this loop, two beads to the next loop We have uh, two last beads left in the row and as you can see we have the last loop uh, before the marker. 
here is the marker and this is the last loop before the marker. That means uh, we are crocheting correctly and we are crocheting two last beads into the last loop. like this first bead and to the same loop and again stop I pull it and I switch my marker like this before I continue, I'm going to pull the end tail in. And tighten it up a bit more. I simply pull it. Okay. As you can see, so far it looks pretty weird. But don't worry and keep going. After a few rows it will all start to look nice. So. Don't be discouraged. Uh, we are still going to continue in the same way, on the same principle. So on the fourth row we have uh, one more bead. So we work two beads each in a separate loop and then increase at the end of the triangle. So again two beads in one loop. And keep going the same way. So crochet one bead to the next loop. one bead to the next loop and two beads to the third loop and still the same one one and two one one and two beads in one loop Uh, when you crochet you are probably tempted to look at the beads themselves to insert the hook to the correct bead but it's clearer to just follow the individual loops. I don't really look at the bead side much when I crochet and just watch that inner side. I just check from time to time to make sure I've got the pattern right. Uh, I found that I hardly ever make a mistake this way. I've now crocheted uh, 10 rows. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can see that it looks much better than at the beginning and the pattern worked out nicely. The work lies nice and flat, so I remind you once again that you need to crochet rather loosely. Also you can clearly see where the corners of the triangles are. And in each of these corners we are increasing the triangles. So if you've had some practice, you don't even have to count the beads and you can easily see which loop to crochet two beads into. It's always uh, this loop uh, in the corner on the left. So this one and here it's this one. This one. So once you get some practice, you will see that. If you are not sure yet, it's always good to prepare a given number of beads for one triangle in advance. Then you don't have to count the loops. For example, if you watch a movie while crocheting, you won't be distracted by the counting. I almost always do. And if I have a pattern like this, I don't even have to count because I can see that uh, when I have two or more of these pink beads, uh, side by side like this. 
That's uh, the interface between the two triangles. So this is one triangle, this is another one, and so on. So I just slide them down like this. And I know that these beads are one part of the triangle, one side. Okay, so we'll continue crocheting in exactly the same way until we hit the black marker. And now two beads in one loop into the same loop again. Prepare the beads for another triangle, slide them down and continue exactly the same way. Okay, so we have worked all 20 rows. This is what it looks like from the other side. Now crochet four more rows so that we can sew on the frame. There will be a change in two things. Uh, here this side and parts of uh, these two sides will be crocheted without beads. And at the same time we are going to continue to increase at the corners. We will crochet 20 beads on each side of the triangle in all four rows. So where we don't have beads we are increasing and where there are beads we don't increase. So these short parts are always made up of three beads so I will crochet three beads and then I will continue without beads. So I remove my first black marker and I slide three beads down And I crochet three beads. One, two, and three. And we continue without beads and increase in these two corners. You can either count the individual loops or you can just look at where we have the join between the triangles and always increase um, in that left loop. Increase here and here. So adjust a single crochet without beads. To the loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through both. And here in this loop I increase, so I crochet two loops into one loop. Increase again, so two loops into one loop and continue, normally one loop. One single crochet into one loop. If you make a mistake it doesn't matter so much because we hide the part without beads in the frame. We stop three loops before the end of the triangle. One, two, three. And we start crocheting with the beads again. This is how it looks from the other side. There is one row without beads and I'm gonna continue with the beads all the way back here. And remember we are not increasing in the corners.
If you had the next marker and end up uh, three beats from the end, one, two, three, you got it right. And the second, third and fourth rows um, are worked exactly the same. That means three beats, then no beats. We are increasing here and here. Here we start with the beats again and continue here, three beats before the end and do not increase anywhere here. We ran out of beats. We finished uh, three beats, one, two, three, uh, before the end, which is correct. That leaves us with four rows on each side with no beats. So I cut the thread, I pull the hook. I'm gonna put the thread on a big eye needle and hide the thread between the loops. Eventually, if you want, you can make some knots. And I do the same with this inner tail. And just for comparison, so you know what a thread consumption is. Who bought um, threads from me on Etsy. Here's what the new thread looks like, 200 meters total. And that's how much thread was left after crocheting both half of the purse. So now crochet the other half the same way. So I will put the two parts together like this. And I will connect them by sewing another row between the two beaded parts. I won't crochet anymore, but I will sew them together with a needle. So we start by cutting a piece of thread, the same one we used to crochet both parts. It doesn't have to be extra long, something about one meter is enough. I thread my needle. I'm going to use big eye needle, um, but you can use a normal needle if you want, it doesn't matter. I will take one half and tie the thread here at this transition between the part with beads and the part without beads. Specifically, I will make a knot uh, somewhere under the loop here without beads. And then I'm gonna thread the needle through this uh, last loop without the beads. Through the loop under the two threads. It doesn't matter if it's from bottom up or top down, I went from bottom up. Then I pick up one bead. Um, usually I sew both parts together with the same color as I used for the outermost rows. But as I said before, in this case, I chose a different color so you can see the join better. I go with my needle through the very next loop. Through the loop of the first bead. Go right into the loop from top down.
and then go with our needle through the loop of the first bead uh, of the opposite side. This is the first bead and this is loop corresponding to this bead from bottom up. And then go through the bead itself, like from right to left. It wouldn't work the other way around. This puts the bead in the same position as all the other beads. You will see it better in a while. And we will continue like this all the way to the end. I will show it a few more times. Pick up another bead. Go through the next loop from top to bottom, right through the loop of the bead. Then go from bottom up through the loop of the opposite bead. And go through the bead itself from right to left. That's it. Again, so you remember it well. Pick up a bead through the loop uh, from top to bottom. Through the opposite loop uh, from bottom to top. And through the bead. That's how we are going to continue to this point, the last bead. This part without beads will remain free. Uh, then we will sew the frame here. We have sewn the last bead. This is how it looks. And now we need to hide both tails in. So I just sew it together. Make a knot. And I go through a couple of loops. Make another note if you want. And cut a tail and do exactly the same with the other one and this is how it looks finished so to make it as simple as possible I've prepared this template here which you can download in PDF you can find the link in the video description down below uh, I will just point out that if you are going to print this, make sure you have the scale in the print settings set to 100% so that those given centimeters uh, match reality. My purse, according to this pattern, which has uh, 20 basic rows, is 9.5 centimeters wide at the widest point.
I added a 0.5 cm all around for the lining so that I could sew the edges comfortably. However, the size of your finished press may vary slightly. If it's just a little, it doesn't matter. If the difference is bigger, it's a good idea to make my template a little bigger or smaller accordingly. So I will prepare the fabric and trace the template. Uh, there's no need to use any special disappearing markers because the edge won't be visible anywhere. I will cut out both parts. Uh, I cut it a little bit bigger because um, I will going to use this uh, hand sewing tool. I will put the two parts together. The facing sides, uh, the, the shiny ones, the ones uh, you want to be visible, will be inside. So I put it like this. And you can connect them with pins if you like. If you put a crocheted press next to it, uh, you can see that we want uh, these sides of the lining to be sewn together. And this part here will be loose. So I put a mark here, like some this here and here. It corresponds to this. And I'm gonna sew the two parts together. You can sew it by hand or on a sewing machine, it's up to you. I came across this amazing thing, a mini hand sewing machine or tool. I wasn't expecting anything from it at all, but I must say uh, it's a great helper for just such small jobs. So I just sew it from here to this point. And of course you can do it by hand if you want. Okay, now it looks like this. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. It will be inside, it will not be visible. Okay, so now I take my scissors and uh, cut the edges. And now I seal the edges to avoid fraying. Okay, so I put the sewn lining inside the purse and now I'm gonna sew uh, these loose edges together. Uh, don't worry, the edge will be hidden in the frame and won't be visible, so it might not be pretty. And this time I will sew it by hand. So I thread my needle and I will start in the edge.
Okay, and this is how it looks. This is how it looks from the inside. And now I will just make a knot and cut a thread. For this type of pattern, which has uh, 20 basic rows, a round frame that is 8.5 cm wide is suitable. You can buy these and many other types of frames on AliExpress or Amazon. I found a lot of awesome frames and ordered other types and sizes for the future tutorials. Uh, so I'm hoping I get it delivered soon. Okay, so we'll take the frame and put it on the purse. Uh, you can see that uh, the frame doesn't quite copy the shape of our crochet, but it's perfectly fine because once we sew it on, it will look very nice. To make it easier to sew, I'm going to attach the frame in three points, here at both ends and in the middle. So I thread my big eye needle. You can use any thread you want, it doesn't matter because then uh, we will remove it. I will start sewing here in the center of the frame, so I will make sure I have the frame positioned correctly. And I'm gonna sew the frame in this point and make a knot. It's a good idea to trim the ends uh, so they don't get in the way. I will do the same on each side. And do the same on the other side. Okay, so this is how we prepared it. Uh, now I'm gonna cut a piece of clear nylon thread. I throw my needle. And either on the inside here or in the front between the beads, I will tie a knot, tie the thread in so you can see it. I will make another one to secure it, just between the beads, don't go uh, inside the hole of the beads. And I go with my needle towards this first hole. I will go through the hole from the inside and now I pick up a bead and go through the same hole again through the other side. Uh, try to make sure that the needle comes out so that it does through the crochet but doesn't go too far inside the purse. 
it's okay if you can see the stitches a bit because then we will cover them with uh, this braided ribbon then we will cover it like this so there can be visible stitches it doesn't matter okay so the first bead covers the hole and we will sew back and forth this way um, so I sew back through the next hole through this one Pick up a bead and sew through the same hole. And the second bead is in place. First, second. And back again. Pick up a bead and do exactly the same. It can sometimes be difficult to insert the needle at the right angle, but with a little practice you can do it in no time. Uh, when you finish the last bead in the hole, uh, hide the thread between the beads and make a knot. So I go with my needle back to the front side. And make a knot between the beads. Just between the beads, don't go with your needle through the holes of the beads. And cut a thread and finally I can remove the yarn. Uh, both halves are sewn and now cover the stitches. I find it uh, most helpful us to stick this braided ribbon in here. It's a synthetic material so I cut and seal both ends so it doesn't fray. I will get some glue on a toothpick. I'm using Uhu All Purpose Strong Glue. Of course, use whatever glue suits you, but it should be suitable for the fabric. I will slowly apply the glue and put the ribbon inside in small sections. My purse is open a lot when I glue it. And here I glue the ribbon a little looser in the corners to allow room for closing and opening uh, so the ribbon doesn't get tied. Thank you. 
and I cut off the edges and seal them. And the purse is all done. It takes a lot of hours of work uh, to make, but I think it's worth it. Let me know down in the comments what do you think. Would you like to see um, tutorials for other types of purses? Uh, also, I would like to ask you if you like this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, check my Patreon or membership here on YouTube if you are interested in some premium features. And that's all for today. Happy beating and see you in the next tutorial. Bye!